Talk Radio across the UK, online, on DAB, and on your smart speaker. The Independent Republic of Mike Graham on Talk Radio. Welcome back to the Independent Republic of Mike Graham right here on Talk Radio. We are, of course, the home of common sense, the only place to find the truth, the whole truth. And nothing but the truth. Uh, we're also going to be bringing you everything that you can hear uh, on television as well. You can watch us on Apple TV, on Rakuten, on Samsung TV+, Plus, on Roku, on YouTube, now on Amazon Fire. Watch us on a tablet, watch us on your watch, watch us on your iPhone, uh, watch us on any device that you've got uh, that's got electricity running through it, uh, courtesy of those nice people uh, in China. Uh, who supply all the batteries and most of the uh, uh, infrastructure and most of the technology, of course. That's what happens. Right now, though, uh, we're going to talk about the peak that we may have reached with climate madness. You know, those uh, insulate Britain people, funnily enough, haven't been back since they got roughed up down Millwall Way uh, and also over on Wandsworth Bridge. I wonder if that was the final denouement for those uh, idiots to say, we're very, very sorry and we're never going to do it again. Well, good. Um, and if it means that the only way to take action against these people is to take action against them, uh, that means it can't be a bad thing. The latest madness, right, and you're not going to believe this, is from the British Medical Journal, in which doctors are being told to cut back on medical testing for things like cancer in order, guess what, to tackle climate change. That's right. I'm afraid they don't want you to be using too many uh, tests. They don't want you to be trying to find out whether people are going to get a disease which is going to kill them because we need to save the planet. I mean, I really do wonder what is going on in these people's heads. The British Medical Journal, the BMJ, uh, is supposed to be something sensible. It's supposed to be an organ uh, of what you might describe as common sense, but it clearly has gone to the dark side uh, because they've written an editorial which in fact says that the biggest crisis facing the world's health is climate. <sighs> not cancer, not COVID, but climate. Jason Reed is here. He's the head of Young Voices. Jason, a very good morning to you. Good morning, Mike. I mean, there are times when I kind of see things and go, well, you know, this is just the woke being a bit daft. But this is mad. This is literally crazy. It's completely bonkers. It just goes to show you can't trust the public health lobby. They'll say or do anything that they think makes them sound good. You said in your intro that this might be the peak of uh, climate change insanity. I'm afraid I, I don't agree. I think we're a long way off the peak. There's a lot more, uh, the, the, a lot no. further that they can go and we just have to wait and see what comes next. But this is a whole new level of, of bonkers, isn't it? I, perhaps I missed the memo, but I thought the point of fighting climate change was that we're protecting the planet so that we have somewhere to live in mm. 100, 200 years time. But if we've all died because we haven't got our cancer treatment on time, and what's the point in protecting the planet? There'll be no people left well, that's right. to live in it. And one of the things they talk about is the NHS England uh, launch of a campaign to tackle climate health emergency by becoming net zero uh, because they were going to start using a lot less plastic. Well, that hasn't gone too well during the COVID pandemic, has it? Because everything that they have provided from PPE to masks to all sorts of other bits and pieces are all made of plastic. Well, exactly. And cutting down on, on plastic waste is one of these... Uh, Again, it's just a virtue signalling talking point used by these people. Uh, roughly 90% of the plastic in the ocean comes from 10 rivers, which are all in Africa and Asia. Britain, in terms of population, we're a small country and we're relatively good at recycling our plastic. We're not contributing in any meaningful way to any kind of plastic pollution. And so this kind of thing is just about being seen to take action or being seen to do something that's good and selfless. But of course, it's not selfless because it will... First of all, it will cost a lot more. So that national insurance increase that we're all paying uh, an extra bit of money mm. to go into the NHS, that will go on to all of these sustainable bamboo cups and straws that they're going to be <laughs> using now. I'm not even sure if you can drink out of bamboo. I mean, I know you can make socks out of it, but I'm not entirely certain if you put something of a liquid nature into a bamboo cup that it's not just going to melt, is it? Well, perhaps the NHS are the best people to answer that question. Well, they right? probably are. But how about this, right? This is what they've actually said in this editorial. Over successive years, we've been told to continually lower our threshold for suspecting cancer, and we're encouraged to investigate sooner and more extensively. You know, like as if that's a bad thing, right? Uh, patients with mildly elevated plate pla platelet counts now undergo a barrage of investigations to determine if cancer is the cause. Shouldn't we be considering the environmental impact of putting so many patients on a conveyor belt of investigations as part of of a cost benefit calculation well they're basically saying we shouldn't be testing too many people for cancer because it's bad for the planet it's completely bonkers i think it's also really insensitive in the aftermath of 
of a pandemic where, of course, we all know about the huge NHS waiting lists and the backlog and people who really have not got the treatment and the testing that they needed when they needed it. Mm. And to be saying to those people now, not only is this a temporary situation where because of the pandemic, your treatment was delayed and that cost a lot of lives, but now we're going to be stopping giving you that treatment altogether because we're worried that it might affect climate change in some marginal way. And my concern is that with the, the government that we have at the moment, which calls itself conservative, they might buy into some of this stuff. Boris Johnson used to be a libertarian once upon a time, yes. but now we're seeing tax increases, we're seeing the growth of the nanny state. And on the climate issue in particular, we've got COP26 coming up, the big conference in Glasgow, in which he's going to be showing off to the world and to Joe Biden in particular. Um, they don't seem to be aware of the cost of uh, net zero in the time frame that they want for everyday consumers, for you and I. And so they're going to be it's entirely possible that they will be uh, really seriously um, considering this kind of completely bonkers policy, yeah. which will have repercussions for, for decades to come. And it seems to me it's also a good example of something we see a lot of now, Jason, which is the kind of use of experts in a field in which they're not actually experts. For example, the health field, uh, where they're using environmental experts from the London School of Hygiene and Tropical Medicine uh, and the University of Washington in Seattle. Now, I'm sure it's very good if you're an expert in environmental um, uh, um, you know, matters, but it doesn't make you an expert on cancer. So therefore, you shouldn't be used as somebody to have a view on whether more cancer tests are a good idea or not. Exactly. I think we've got to the point now where uh, environmentalism is seen as such a universal good that absolutely everyone can contribute to it. And no matter what the cost is, of course, if we really, if the British Medical Journal really cared about uh, getting to net zero as quickly as possible, what they should be doing is campaigning for things like nuclear power mm. or campaigning against China, building a new coal powered station every five minutes yes. those are the things that really are having an impact on the planet and really are increasing our emissions but the fact that they're focusing locally they're focusing on the nhs which is possibly the worst possible area to focus in terms of the costs that these kind of measures will bring about just shows that they don't care about the no. climate at all they only care about having their name in the british medical journal so that people can see oh my goodness what a, what a good and selfless person you are saving the planet yeah and what is that all about? Because, you know, I've been around this planet a bit longer than you, Jason, but I've never been in a, a period of time where people are so intensely um, worried about what other people think about them. It's this modern virtue signalling age, isn't it? And I don't think it's even a, a political thing. We're seeing it on all sides of the, of the political spectrum. People care much more about the short-termist impression of what they're doing mm. than about... Um, what the actual substantive policy debate is about. And this is a good example of why the government is not in a good position to fight something like climate change, because climate change is a long-term issue. And so if you're the kind of person who you're thinking, well, in, in, I might not be in government in five or 10 years' time, so I don't really care mm. about what the actual impact will be of this policy I'm proposing, because I'll be raking it in in the private sector by then. So you can do things that grab nice headlines, like banning plastic straws, which have no impact whatsoever on saving the planet, but they look good for you and they do good things for your CV. And in the short term, that's all that matters. Yes. And I, I suppose this will be the first of many uh, such statements of intent from various organisations ahead of this COP26 thing, where they're all trying to jump on the bandwagon uh, and, and make more brownie points for themselves. Exactly. Yeah, I can't see this getting any better. It's only going to get worse, both between now and COP26, which is next month in November, and after that as well, because supposedly they're going to set the agenda for climate change for the future. And if the agenda consists of uh, warped thinking like this, that banning plastic straws in hospitals is going to be how we save the planet, then I'm afraid we have a lot more of this to come. I'm afraid so. Jason, good to talk to you. Thank you very much indeed. Jason Reed, the head of Young 